They understood what we wanted and they listened to all the needs that we had and were able to deliver specifically what was asked for. As a global health research institution, MRC recognizes its impact on the environment and through the kind of research we carry out. And with this in mind, MRC came up with significant steps on how to reduce or to mitigate the impact that we have on the environment. So one of the ways was to look at an alternative source of energy and by this we focused on photovoltaic supply of power within the unit. This case study provides an overview of a photovoltaic diesel hybrid system for self-consumption used by the Medical Research Council in Uganda, located in the city of Entebbe. The hybrid system was installed in 2020 to help MRC reduce its carbon footprint and its electricity bill too. It's also part of how MRC is directly addressing the climate crisis. High electricity bills led to high expenses and this reduced the funds that we had for other research activities within the organization. So we couldn't buy new equipment, we couldn't take people for training. So that kind of uh, restricted us because of the high expenses towards the electricity bills. The MRC had to deal with high energy expenses, which came from utility bills and from the diesel consumed by the backup generators to cover grid blackouts. In 2018, approximately, 308,000 US dollars was spent on electricity and diesel, although diesel accounted for only 8.5% of total energy costs. The primary aim of the project was to reduce the hospital's dependency on external energy supply by introducing a solar photovoltaic system for self-consumption, hybridized with existing diesel generators while maintaining the utility grid as the main energy supply. A hydro PV system is a solar PV system that has more than one energy source, aside from the solar PV. Typically, um, a hydro PV system can have um, several renewable energy sources like wind or hydro, but also it can have diesel gensets as an extra source of um, energy for the system. For the systems uh, without batteries, then the hybridization consists only of solar PV plus, um, plus a diesel genset or a gas genset, for example. And the main role in this case of the solar PV is to help reduce the amount of energy needed by the diesel genset, which is the grid forming unit and is the unit that will supply the load for all the time. To begin this project, engineers conducted an on-site technical assessment in order to evaluate MRC's energy consumption. They also had to understand the current status of the electrical installation and the available roof space, among other technical aspects. It was important to make sure that the available roof area was large enough to fit the solar panels in the optimal configuration both in terms of peak power and orientation. So Asmuth carried out a feasibility study and they looked at all our energy needs and how our consumption was and how our operation within the institute, how we carry out our research. And they discovered that most of the research activities are carried out during the time. And this was a good thing because that's the time when the energy output by the sun is at its highest output. So. With the increase in activities during that time and also the energy within from the sun being higher at that same particular moment, we were able to come up with a grid tight system which could capture the energy for use within the institute. And with this they also looked at our consumption. At the end of the day they came up with a 472 kilowatt peak system. After assessing several building rooftops of the research hospital, it was decided to install the solar panels on 11 different buildings. In this case, the MRC didn't have uh, problems of blackouts because their system is already quite reliable. They have electricity from the grid in the three sides and they also have diesel gensets for the three sides. So in this case, the main problem was that they wanted to reduce the electric bill and to reduce the energy that they consume. 
At first, the main reasons for installing the solar system were to reduce the carbon footprint of the system and energy costs. Although other benefits were also initially expected, such as a considerable reduction of fuel dependence. However, the technical assessment revealed that less than 9% of total energy costs came from fuel expenditure. Therefore, the engineers recommended that the grid connected system would be more suitable. They also conclude that during blackouts, the load would still be entirely supplied by diesel generators. It is important to guarantee the sustainability of such systems. Therefore, to facilitate it, the engineers provided training to the technical staff that are in charge of operating and performing the preventive maintenance of the system. Adequate operation and maintenance will increase the lifetime of the system and thus improve its technical and economic feasibility. We are, it's freeing up money, so we are looking at expanding as a unit. So the money which was being used to pay for the electricity bills can now do other activities, such as training of staff, uh, uh, buying more equipment, uh, scientific equipment, which will enhance research within the institute. So the problem that the client had has been, has been solved, we can say. Um, basically because during the first year we are seeing that the two PV systems without batteries have achieved save savings of up to 30% of the original energy consumed and for the system with batteries, the containerized solution, the savings have gone up to 70%. This project was privately financed. It is expected that the investment of 371000 250 US dollars, which is $1.65 per bat pick, will be recovered in approximately seven years, with an internal rate of return of 15% after 25 years. As a unit, we are, as I mentioned, we are working towards a net zero carbon reduction, given that we are part of the London School of Tropical Medicine.